Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to another one of my cake videos. In this one, I'm making a chocolate gâteau and I'm making this for the charity Macmillan Cancer Support. Every year throughout the whole of the UK, coffee mornings are held to raise funds. The event is called the world's biggest coffee morning, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you how I make these delicious cakes. I'll start by making the chocolate sponge. It's very easy to make, but you do need an electric stand or a hand mixer. And here's a list of the ingredients to make the sponge. I'll be using one of these cake tins. The sizes of the tin are on screen. I'll also put the dimensions in the description box below the video. Start by greasing the base and then line it with parchment paper. and grease the sides of the tin too. OK, once the tin's greased, set it aside until needed. Time to preheat the oven to 170 degrees Celsius, that's 338 Fahrenheit or gas mark 4. I'm setting mine to 150 Celsius as my oven's fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. Right, roughly mix all of the dry ingredients except the sugar together. That's the flour, cocoa powder, corn flour, you may know that as corn starch, and the salt. Then put the whole lot through a fine sieve. This aerates the mix, but more importantly, it gets rid of any lumps. Any bits that's left in the sieve, just push them through with your fingers. Now on to the mixer. Put in the five eggs and the sugar and simply mix until it's rich, thick and creamy. Start the mixer on slow, then switch to medium high, which is number 8 on my machine. And this is what it should look like after about 4 to 5 minutes mixing. Dribble some of the mix across the top of the mixture. If it leaves a trail, then slowly disappears back into the mix. It's ready to use. This is called the ribbon test. Okay, start to gently fold in the dry ingredients as shown. Do this in three to four stages. Don't be tempted to do this in your machine because even on the slow speed it will knock most of the air out of the mixture. Make sure you get all these pockets of dry mix that may sink to the bottom of the bowl. Once you're happy with it, get it into the baking tin and into the preheated oven. Set the timer for 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes I'll check to see if it's done. One way of testing to see if it's done is to gently but carefully touch it with your finger. If the indentation doesn't slowly spring back it needs a little more time. So I'll give it another couple of minutes.
Another and probably the best way to test if it's done is to carefully push a cocktail stick into the middle of the sponge. If it comes out clean, it's done. And mine is done, so I'll take it out. After the five minutes, it'll shrink back from the sides of the tin, as you can see in the video. If you notice that it's stuck anywhere around the sides, just carefully run a thin bladed knife around the edge until it releases. Now using another greased rack, turn the tin over, then release the buckle and lift the tin off, remembering it's still pretty hot. Use your oven gloves if you have to. Now I'll lift off the base and peel back the paper and set it aside while I get started on this rich dark chocolate mousse filling. And that's the beauty about this gâteau. You don't have to make it all at the same time. You can make each part separate and then just assemble the cake once everything is made. And here's a list of the ingredients needed for the chocolate mousse filling. Now this rich dark silky chocolate mousse is a great dessert just on its own, but that's for another video. First job is to whip the cream until it just starts to set up as shown. Keep a close eye on it, this only takes a couple of minutes. If you do go too far and the cream is too thick, just add a couple of tablespoons of cream or milk until it loosens up again. Now get that into a large bowl, cover and refrigerate for now. And that's the first stage of the chocolate mousse complete. Right onto the second part of the mousse. Start by separating four egg yolks into a bowl and then add one whole egg. Next you'll need 300 grams, that's 10 and a half ounces of a good quality dark chocolate. Cut up the chocolate as shown as it's easier to melt. Once you have everything prepped and ready, it's time to start the second stage of this chocolate mousse. This part is called the sabayon, but don't be put off by the posh wrench name, it's quite easy to make. But you do need some kind of kitchen thermometer, as you'll see in a moment. Out of the chocolate mousse ingredients list, add the 60 ml of water to a small saucepan followed by the 150 grams, that's 5.5 ounces of granulated sugar. Now without stirring, bring this to a steady simmer on a medium to low heat. This is where the thermometer comes in, as you need to reach a target temperature of 110 degrees Celsius, that's 230 Fahrenheit. I like to use these infrared laser thermometers for this. You can pick these up really cheap these days and they're really handy in the kitchen. Not being sponsored by the way. Ok, while the syrup is getting to temperature, add the eggs to the mixer ready to go. Once the syrup reaches the target temperature of 110 Celsius, that's 230 Fahrenheit, start the mixer on low speed. Then very carefully, as it's seriously hot, pour in the bubbling hot syrup. Once it's all in, turn up the speed to medium high on the machine. I'm on number 6 on my mixer. Now leave that to mix until the bowl feels cool to the touch. This should take about 3 to 4 minutes. In the meantime I can melt the chocolate ready to put this beautiful mousse together. To melt the chocolate, bring a small saucepan with a little water in to a boil, then turn off the heat and place the bowl of chocolate on the pan and melt it until it reaches a temperature of 39 degrees Celsius, that's 102 Fahrenheit. Now let that sit on a pan of lukewarm water until the sabayon is ready. Back to the mixer. Once the bowl is cool to the touch, the sabayon should be thick, smooth and shiny. From pouring in the hot syrup, this took just under 4 minutes in real time. 
the motion of the mixer actually cools it down. Right, all three parts are done, that's the cream, sabayon and chocolate. All I have to do now is put this mousse together. Right, start by pouring the sabayon over the whipped cream. Now scrape out the bowl because you'll need it all. Now using a whisk to gently stir, dribble over the warm chocolate a little at first. Then you can add the rest as shown in the video. It's important that the chocolate is still at the required temperature. If you let it cool down any, it'll harden as soon as it hits the cold cream. That's why I've had mine sitting on a pan of warm water at about the same temperature as the chocolate. Ok, all you've got to do now is to gently stir it until it's all combined into a rich, silky smooth dark chocolate mousse. And like I said earlier, this would make a great dessert on its own. All you would do is to pipe it into containers, such as wine glasses for instance, chill it for a few hours until it sets, then just top it off with whipped cream and fresh berries and or nuts and there you have a delicious dessert. Wonderful! And that's the second part of the chocolate gâteau done. Now I'll cover that and stick it in the fridge and get on with the final part of the cake, which is the stabilised whipped cream. And here's a list of the ingredients for the stabilised whipped cream. Now I'm making my cakes a couple of days in advance of our coffee morning, so I need to stabilise the whipped cream that decorates the top and around the bottom of the gâteau, so it doesn't loosen off and go soft and you stabilise the cream by adding gelatin to it. If you're having your gâteau the same or following day, just miss out the gelatin part of the recipe and just make the whipped cream with the vanilla and sugar. Right to make the stabiliser, soak two small gelatin leaves in cold water for three minutes. In a small saucepan, heat up 80 ml of non-citric juice or just plain water with a teaspoon of sugar in. I'm using the juice from a can of cherries I opened for another cake I'm doing. Turn off the heat just before it boils and stir in the soaked gelatin leaves and leave that to cool down to room temperature, which will take three to four minutes. And while that's cooling, I can get on with whipping up the cream, vanilla and sugar. And the name for this mix is Chantilly Cream. I go into a bit more detail on how to make Chantilly cream in my Victoria sponge video. I'll leave a link in the description box below for it. Once the cream starts to thicken up a bit, reduce the speed of the machine and slowly pour in the cool gelatine mix as shown in the video. As soon as it's fully combined with the cream, turn off the machine and get it into a separate bowl and cover until needed. Now a little tip on how to store this Chantilly cream. If you didn't add the gelatine, keep it in the fridge until required. If you did add the gelatine, keep it out of the fridge until it's needed, or it may set up a bit too stiff to pipe when it comes to decorating the top of the cake. Ok, that's all three main components of the gâteau done. That's the sponge, the chocolate mousse and the Chantilly cream. Now I can get on with assembling the cake. I'll start by greasing a 10 inch, that's a 25 centimetre cake board with a little butter. Then I'll centre the sponge on the board and this is where the gâteau will permanently stay. It'll be really handy if you have one of these turntables, but not essential. I think I only paid about £6 for this one. Now cut the cake into three pieces as shown. And as you can see, these Genoise sponges are very flexible and easy to cut and handle. Right, time to add the chocolate mousse filling to the first layer. 
I'll be piping mine on, but if you're not happy using a piping bag, you can just spread it on with a pallet knife or a spatula. If you are using a piping bag, you'll need a fairly large nozzle, like the one I'm using. These large disposable piping bags are brilliant. I only paid about £2 for a roll of 20 online. Right, whether you're piping or not, get a layer of the chocolate mousse about an inch or 25mm thick onto the first layer of sponge. This next part I didn't include in the ingredients list and that's what berries to use, if any. I'm using these frozen raspberries because they're cheaper, juicier and easier to push into the chocolate mousse. But you can choose whatever berries you like. In the other gâteaux I'm making, I'm using canned black cherries for those. OK, lift the second layer of sponge on the top and gently press it down a little. Now this is the only layer that I like to apply a little moisture to. And I'm using some of that cherry juice with a little cherry brandy mixed in. But that's a personal choice. Or you can make up your own syrup with a 50-50 sugar and water mix. OK, I'll apply another coat of the chocolate mousse and raspberries and then I'll put the top sponge on. But I'll level this one out a little to make sure the top sits on squarely. OK, I'll even out the sides with one of my scrapers and then it's time to apply a coat of the mousse all over the whole cake. This is probably the part of the process most people worry about, but there's no rush with this mousse. Just take your time and play with it until you get it the way you want it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll let you watch how I do it and I'll speak again in a moment. Right, that took about 5 minutes in real time. Now I lift the gado off the turntable and get it into the fridge for an hour so that the mousse can set up a little before I start piping on the cream. OK, it's an hour later and time to decorate the gâteau with the Chantilly cream. And once again, just take your time and get creative. There's no rules to what pattern to use, just try to make it look pretty. And I'll be using this medium sized sawtooth nozzle to do my patterns. Right, I'll let you watch how I've done mine and I'll speak again when I get to the chocolate decorations. Now what I'm going to do is break up a couple of these milk chocolate flake bars and sprinkle the bits over the top of the cake before placing on some halved glazed cherries. Another thing you could do is simply grate a chocolate bar over the top of the cake. That looks quite effective. Right, I'll pop some of these half glazed cherries on the top. These are a bit sticky to pick up, especially if you're wearing rubber gloves. An easier way is to use a cocktail stick as shown. Go 
Okay, I'll carefully slide the gatto onto this thicker cake board before attempting to sprinkle the chocolate on the sides of the cake. You can slide yours onto a large plate or cake stand. Now you can't see it, but I'm holding this cake at a 45 degree angle so I can get the chocolate onto the sides of the gatto. And the really hard part about this is trying to hold it in front of the camera. And that's it all done. One chocolate gatto complete. And now all I have to do is get it over to the Macmillan Coffee Morning venue, which is a retirement housing complex that my wife runs, and hopefully get it there in one piece. And it's two days later, and here we are at the coffee morning. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.